in episode 235 I showed the Red Octane PSTC, which some people consider the holy grail of console pedals. Connecting a dedicated pedal controller into the second controller port feels slightly overkill, considering that many third-party light guns sport a dedicated pedal socket, which allows interaction with a plethora of generic pedals. In the current episode I will show a few pedals made for musical instruments, which can either be used directly or demand slight modification. While there are many real instrument kick pedals which can't be used directly for light guns because they are piezo element based, such as the Yamaha KU100, there are a lot which will work just fine. Personally I went with the Roland FD8, which uses a pressure sensitive potentiometer sheet. If sufficient pressure is applied, the resistance drops low enough to bridge two contacts. The faceplate is made of thick metal and looks very nice. The angle of incline can be adjusted with a supply tool. The spring force is just right, but the potentiometer takes so much force that playing in a seated position is unfeasible. When standing, however, the pedal is one of my all-time favorites. The advantage of real e-drum pedals is that they were built to high standards and therefore are super sturdy and reliable. On second-hand markets, the FD8 and similar pedals, which rely on the same internals, are not hard to find and can be obtained for low prices. If you acquire a used unit, you might pick one up, in which the rubber actuator turned hard, as the Roland FD8 has been in production since 2003. You could then either pick up a replacement actuator for 8 US dollars, or soften the original actuator. To do so, you would soak the part in Vaseline or a dedicated softener for 7 days and then cure it in boiling water. Alternatively, you could convert the pedal to use a reed switch, which would also reinstate the gaming in a seated position use case. Of course, besides guitars and drum sets, other instruments also support pedals, like organs, pianos and keyboards. Personally, I went with the Piano Sustain pedal DP2 from Roland. As shown in episode 201, I had to swap the NC and NO pads of the internal linear switch in order to make the pedal work with light guns. The pedal is very compact and box shaped. Early models still sported a big logo on top, while the current production units are just plain. Lacking a slope, this isn't the most ergonomic pedal, and due to its low weight, it slips on the floor very easily. Against all odds, I enjoyed using this pedal. Especially in a seated position, it worked really well for me. This pedal will certainly not give the player an arcade-like experience, but it's a reliable input device. Some of the Naughty's music video games also support pedal controllers. While those were built to lower quality standards, I still want to showcase these pedals here, as for their abundance in second-hand markets. The kick pedal was made in 2007 by PDP for the game Rock Band, which was released for several consoles at the time. What I'm showing here is the 2008 Rock Band 2 version, which sports a metal faceplate, which makes it sturdier. The main body is a plastic construction, but it has just very little give and feels good. Internally, a reed switch is actuated by a moving magnet. Therefore, the pedal is completely linear. The permanently attached TS cable is coiled tightly and pulls back surprisingly strong. Thus, the player would want to use an extension cable for this pedal when paired with a light gun. The used spring is very squeaky and rather strong. It won't affect playability, but makes the steep incline of the pedal more notable and tiresome, especially when playing in standing position. Personally, I like the pedal a lot but I would swap out the coil spring with a weaker unit if I was to use it more frequently. The kick pedal came in a blue and black box, which depicted a frantically playing drummer on the front. The package included an adapter, which allowed the player to use a total of two pedals. The wired kick pedal controller was made in 2005 by Red Octane for the Sony PlayStation 2 game Guitar Hero. As explained in episode 201, it relies on a piezo element and thus has to be converted before it can be used as a light gun pedal. I like the details and texture on the faceplate and I think the pedal looks quite nice. It is made of a flexible plastic and thus the plate bends easily. Generally, the pedal feels loose and will pivot sideways if pressed off center. I enjoy using it from a seated position, 
but I have the impression that it's not sturdy enough to be used when standing upright. Compared to the rock band pedal, the incline is less steep, which I appreciate a lot. The spring is less strong and quieter. I would appreciate the pedal more if it had an even weaker spring and non-slip pads, but overall I like this iconic pedal a lot. The retail box went with a brushed metal look and does a great job presenting the pedal. The package included a passive TRS to double TS adapter, which allowed players to use two pedals simultaneously. As explained in previous videos, in my opinion, generic metal made industrial foot pedals still offer the best value per dollar ratio. With the clicky micro switches, those are a joy to use and feel surprisingly arcade like. I hope, however, that I was able to give a decent overview on available alternatives. This is the end of the video. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.